Thank you so much, Jen. And I guess that I forgot to introduce myself. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Charlotte Cressy. I'm an enthusiast for the benefits of veganism and animal rights. I'm the Director of Community Outreach for Orange County People for Animals. We are based in Orange County, but I live in Colorado, and I'm bringing our message of compassion to a place where they really need it in Fort Collins, which is a big ranching, big animal agricultural area. And I also encourage the mindset of veganism through meditation and yoga. So I also teach yoga, and I'm teaching yoga Saturday and Sunday morning as well. So perhaps I'll see you there. is Anthony Marr. He's a dear personal friend of mine. I first met Anthony last April on his seventh Compassion for Animals road expedition, the CARE 7 tour, when he led a motorcade for the animals in Orange County, California. Six months and 37 states later, I hosted his last speaking event of the tour in Fort Collins, Colorado, my new hometown. The 40 states in seven months CARE 7 tour was only his latest major achievement. Anthony has a physics degree and is a solid base on climate change for the animal rights movement. He is the author of Omniscience and the Human Destiny, where he advanced a new cosmology described by university scientists as the philosophical system of the 21st century. His second book, Homo Sapiens, Save Your Earth, answers the call of the time. He is now working on his third book. He is a world-known Canadian wildlife preservationist who has worked in tiger reserves in India, performed operations in Japan, and he led the highest profile anti-hunting campaign in Canadian history, involving 1,800 volunteers, where he debated cohorts of hunters, up to 120 at a time, and more than 30 times, he did that more than 30 times in a two-month road tour. Anthony was physically assaulted for his trouble, which of course made him even more anti-hunting than ever. <laughs> Anthony is the founder of Heal Our Planet Earth and the Global Anti-Hunting Coalition. He has been a speaker at the Animal Rights Conference since 2004, and last year he was honored with the Henry Spiro Grassroots Activist Award. Anthony's favorite color is white because it includes the beauty of all the other colors. I asked everyone to tell me their favorite color to add something light to the presentation. So let's give Anthony a warm welcome back to the Animal Rights Conference. Happen 
about five years ago, as late as five years ago, every scientist thought that it's going to happen at the end of the century. Now, ever since 2007, when the huge melt-off in the Arctic ice occurred, all the scientists scrambled to, uh, to update it, and they, and they updated it from the year 2100 to the year 2013, yeah. which, which is only two years from now, all the ice. I think it's a little bit too fast, maybe 2015, 2016, only three or four years from now. I predict that the global temperature will rise very quickly once the ice has all melted. That's number one. Number two, when the ice has all melted, the Arctic will warm up very fast, especially the Arctic. And when that happens, it will melt off all the, gradually, all the permafrost surrounding the Arctic Ocean, which contains a huge amount of methane frozen at the moment. Methane is much more powerful, greenhouse gas and carbon dioxide by about 25 to, to 30 uh, times as powerful. So once that happens, combined with all the methane emitted from the cattle industry of ours, and let me just give you this top of this uh, one liner, a meat eater riding a bicycle emits more greenhouse gases than a vegan driving a hammer. So, between animal agriculture and the Arctic methane emission, it will warm up the earth even faster and they drive the earth into a runaway global heating situation when there will be no remedy whatsoever. So, the time to correct this is now. Once that happens, when the earth begins to really warm up, the major effects will be a giant trend globally. Now, you might think that if the atmosphere is warmer than it should, then more water will be uh, uh, evaporated into the uh, atmosphere, there should be more water in the, in the atmosphere. That's true, there are currently about 5% more water in the atmosphere than previously about 100 years ago. However, warmer air can also hold a lot more water before saturation than cooler water, so uh, than cooler air. So uh, the net is that the global relative humidity has been declining for the last two or three decades already and it will continue to do so. And because there is more absolute amount of water in the atmosphere, if you hit a cold spot farther north, like in Canada, you will have much, much heavier rain and floods and snow. But when you're living around here or in the lower USA or in the middle uh, Midwest, US Southeast, Southwest, you will get droughts. And you, have, you already have had droughts already. Um, California, Arizona, particularly Georgia, and it hasn't quite let up. Uh, Australia has had a big uh, drought. China right now is having huge droughts. The Amazon was desiccated, at least in part, in 2005. That was predicted because it was in combination with a video, which is a drying and warming trend. So, all in all, we should be prepared for huge environmental changes, both in terms of food production as well as wildlife habitat. Africa too is going to be desiccated and African wildlife other than the direct human impact because Africa is going to be drying out and Africa's um, uh, population is shooting up at, you know, at the highest rate uh, possible combined with the Middle East, which is really scary between the two of them. And uh, Africa is going to be drying out, the Middle East is already dry. So uh, there will be huge amounts of famine in Africa and probably the Middle East. Now, we recall back a couple of, back earlier last year when um, in the Egypt uh, political unrest, what was it caused by? It was triggered by rising food prices, okay? The entire Middle East was revolutionized and um, dynamicized because of that little thing. What if it is not higher food prices but food shortage? What do you think is going to happen? So, over the next while, things are going to happen really, really fast. Within 20 years, I think the global temperature is going to be a lot higher. Home, uh, the uh, droughts are going to be very global. And uh, the food production is going to drop. Human food production is keeping on going up. So, you can plot the graphs yourselves and see where they end up. The oceans, too, are going to be hugely impacted because of the war. The, Warming waters, number one, warmer ocean waters will be negative for plankton. Plankton is the foundation of a food pyramid in the ocean. If the plankton is impacted on the everything, 
uh, up the uh, trophic levels. There are five or six trophic levels from a plankton, phytoplankton, zooplankton, level one consumer, level two, level three, and we human beings sit on top together with all the marine mammals. There are approximately one quarter of a million species in the ocean, of which only 15,000 species are fish, and only 120 species are marine mammals, and all these are the first to go. So, uh, we are expecting that the ocean is going to lose a huge amount, and it, this is not just theory, it is not just computer modeling, it is, uh, it's happened before. We're talking about mass extinction. We've, so we're right now in the sixth mass extinction on this planet. About 50 years ago, we were losing about 20 known species every day. And uh, usually, you multiply by 10 to give the number of unknown species. So, but today, it is instead of 20 known species a day, it's about 100 plus known species a day. It is accelerating. And uh, it is either through direct assault on the Amazon, particularly tropical rainforest, deforestation, and, de and the deforestation is because of us. We are consuming so much beef, so much ethanol, that we cannot produce enough of these to feed our own people. So we have to go to Brazil to buy more beef and buy more soy. And uh, Brazil says, okay, no problem, we've got an unlimited amount of potential arable land, meaning the, uh, the Amazon rainforest. And thousands of uh, square miles are being plowed down for these two products and they are just temporary because the soil in the Amazon is very poor and it won't last. Once it's been plowed down, it will become desert in a few years and they've got to do, do it some more. And because of the ocean warmth, warming up the ocean acidity is also going to be rising uh, or the pH is going to be dropping. Right? The pH started off as 8.2 before uh, industrialization of our species. Now it is uh, 8 point, less than 8.1, and when it goes down to 7.8, all the phytoplankton will be impacted. Any species in the ocean which has any skeleton which is made of carbon, uh, calcium carbonate, which basically means all the species with skeleton will be impacted. And the plankton being so small, they will be impacted. All the plankton have tiny little um, cages of calcium carbonate that contains them. Uh, and uh, when they can't form the cage, they can't survive. And even the, the krill, on top of that, on level two, the, the crabs and the lobsters, all these, they cannot form the shells and they will all die off. So, and it has happened before, we're talking about mass extinction. It has happened five times before. When we talk about mass extinction, we usually talk about the fifth one, which wiped out all the dinosaurs 64 million years ago. And that's the one that we know the best. And, um, but that's not the worst one. The worst one is number three, the end Permian, 251 million years ago, and that one wiped out 75% of all the species on land and 95% of all the species in the ocean, averaging 85% extinction, which is absolutely devastating. And it, it was caused by <coughs> global warming because around that time, the supercontinent Pangaea was beginning to break up and there was a lot of uh, geological activities. I've only one or two minutes left, so I'd like to end on this note. I have heard in this movement so many times when people say, I wish our species would go extinct, and then our planet will be turned to evil. And I can see that, and it will happen. There was even a you know, television program called uh, Life After People, and everything will return to pre-human times. However, there was only one thing that we believe, I believe that we need to be here for. We need to be here. Why? Because I talked about the, uh, the asteroid wiping out the dinosaurs. It is only a matter of when, not if, another one comes down. And if we care for the whales and the dolphins and the seals and the tigers and lions and eagles, we cannot let this happen because they will all be wiped out just like dinosaurs. And we're the only species who can do something about it. So if we can get rid of our, of our um, uh, planet destroying trend and, uh, or uh, get rid of us being planet destroyers and turn our way around, change our way of life, we can then become a planet protector and all the species will be under our protection. So let's, and it is all up to this movement, believe me. This movement is the most enlightened, it, it, this group of people in this room is probably the most enlightened if you average everything out in the entire world. So it is up to us to make us good, to turn us from bad boys to good 
girls and boys. And, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be that sexist about it. Uh, and all species. Is so, uh, you know, we're all in the same food web, but uh, if an asteroid comes down, it's up to us to, to deflect it. So um, let's do our job, but first of all, let's restitute ourselves into more angelic than demonic. So thank you so much, and uh, it is my great pleasure.